you're going to add a little bit more broth and now I'm going to reduce the temperature to medium and let this baby cook a little bit more because the longer it takes for the grain to absorb the liquid the more starch it releases but at the beginning you do not want to slow down the process one more and two more and a lot of times people tell me but chef when do you know the risotto is done I can know I can I know when the risotto is done just by looking at it because of the experience and the amount of risotto I've been cooking but you guys taste test your palate and to make sure that is al dente the bite that you feel in a risotto is the best way to find out and the myth about throwing your pasta to the roof that's usually an overcooked pasta if it sticks can you imagine if you would be testing that in the kitchen in a profession my entire ceiling would be full of pasta so I'm gonna lower the temperature now to make sure that nothing is gonna burn I love myself <laughs> I do I do we have very few minutes left for this risotto to be ready meanwhile we're going to add a little bit of sea salt this is pure sea salt you have all the minerals that your body needs in salt salt to a certain extent is needed and too much of it is not too much of anything is not good for us but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't season your food and we're gonna taste a little bit white pepper a little bit of white pepper for those of you that want to know the difference between white pepper and black of course color is one but the black peppercorn has been soaked the exterior skin is removed the inner core is white that is white pepper they're brothers and sisters but they all have different characteristics one last taste and this I want to make sure that I only grab the grains The crunch of the beets. The grains are so al dente. Now we're gonna to go to the mantecare stage. Off, off, no more heat. We're going to add some of this butter, and that's more than enough because I rather use extra virgin olive oil in my risotto. And the reason that we have add we add fat to the risotto is because we want the fat go between the starch and does not clump it up it would become creamy the texture becomes more creamy the same way why we add butter or we call it Monteobo or um, the, we add butter to a sauce is the same thing we creating an emulsifying process we emulsifying the ingredients or the sauce or the liquid drizzle of extra virgin olive oil and the parmigiano mm. Oh, don't worry, we're getting there, we're good. The, the, the only reason that I put that much right now is because the whole idea is you add a little bit, you make sure it's well mixed, and you add a little bit more. If you add everything at once, then you're gonna have pieces of Parmesan here and there that are not going to be folded in correctly. For those of you that cook and bake and will see some recipes, they say fold your egg whites. This is folding, okay? This is mixing. This is folding. A little bit more Parmigiano. And don't forget, I turned that off. Doesn't mean the cooking process stopped. The risotto is still cooking. The grains are still cooking. And we are done with this. I'll do one taste test last. Make sure that it's seasoned right. If it needs anything else, I'll adjust seasoning. Any of you ever go to Baskin Robbins, bring me some of these up. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, this is how I would serve this at the restaurant. Did you notice the entire process we used a spatula, a heat resistant spatula? Because in the olden days, before this spatula was available, we would use a wooden spoon. But if you use a wooden spoon, what happens is you break the grains as you're stirring, and the starch is released much faster. You get this gummy risotto. One quick trick that I want to share with you is 
the goat cheese that have crumbled up. When Michael and I, we started prepping for this dish, the goat cheese was at its room temperature. We put it in the freezer for about 20 minutes, so the, five, the water contents start grabbing each other. They become, became harder. Then with two forks, you crumble it up. Any creamy cheese that you want to crumble or you want to use in that case, you always put it in the freezer for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the size. If you got a small little piece of goat cheese, less, larger, longer. That way it's easy for us to crumble. Then we're going to add the main actor in the middle. We're going to add a little bit of the parsley now over it, red and green. We're going to add a little bit of basil and that thyme again over here. And I'm going to take some of this goat cheese and put it on top. Beautiful. With, from my heart to yours. Thank you. We share our recipes with you, you enjoy them, and then you change them and make them yours. And say, hey, that was my recipe. Who am I to say otherwise? Love you guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Chef Michael Fecker.